so we will see now a, a second video so we have uh, this action in the central zone we will see it again the preparation is good here we could isolate the pivot yeah, the pivot the external pivot we can see two defenders there and there we isolated number three so the work tactically speaking is right we will have duels but now the problem is technical this pass which should have been an easy one is not really well done and the attack is not does not succeed we are behind uh, this uh, player now uh, it is the uh, follow-up and uh, we decided to uh, use uh, this uh, uh, play and uh, we can find the solution here we will see again this situation we can see that the defense takes a long time to uh, be well uh, placed and uh, very quickly we will use a movement and we will find a good throw solution and now we will have a fourth attack this attack uh, does not succeed. Uh, it is not a performing one, but there are a few interesting elements to, to see here. So we have a, a good space, a good uh, move of the ball. We can see uh, the defenders with the uh, uh, backcourt players and uh, we will see we will look for a duel in the central zone. This, this is excellent. This is a very good attack preparation. Uh, all defenders were on one part of uh, the field. Uh, we have five defenders on one ha hand and two defenders on the other. So it's a very favorable uh, situation. The attack is well prepared, but now there's a problem. Here, we don't have uh, the capacity of uh, two uh, to one, especially given to number 10, which would have been uh, more externally uh, to uh, uh, facilitate his uh, play two to one. So the situation is a good one, but for the decisive pass, it was not a, a good situation at the tactical level. And this uh, situation, which was favorable, does not succeed. This sequence uh, is a first part of uh, an attack, which is interesting. So we still have a good uh, side space. We use uh, uh, to have a duel in the central zone. We will use then the pivot to uh, go away from the number three to create a situation of danger. So this is well done. And unfortunately, there's a free throw and the second part of the attack around this uh, free throw. We still have another uh, free throw. So we want to keep the ball in attack. We want to have a long, uh, at, in a long attack. Uh, we are two to two at six minutes. So what is interesting now is to see the final part of this attack. It is the capacity in attack on the third part of the play to... Uh, this is very interesting uh, because we want to surprise the uh, opponent. Uh, we see the defenders who are not really focused and we attack very quickly on an action which is a decisive action. Another sequence. This time, uh, the objective is to get a duel. Still with the same principle as we saw in the central zone with the pivot uh, to uh, uh, give some uh, ga a gap uh, for the duel. Uh, 
so he slide the pivot is sliding and the pivot uh, the player three is mobilized but another technical error uh, pass which has not been uh, well carried out and behind we cannot attack so a free throw uh, we have a second part of the play behind and we can uh, see a lot of space here uh, it is isolated in two to one, but this will be, we, this will succeed because you have a lot of space to play. The right backcourt player uh, will mobilize two defenders. And here you have a good relationship uh, uh, to uh, throw your ball very quickly. This action is a very good action on uh, a work of sliding of the pivot behind the defenders. What is interesting is to see this uh, attack because uh, we see that the play of uh, the pivot without ball, which is decisive, as you can see, the, def the defenders number three are very aggressive. They're well situated and it is the sliding of the pivot behind the defenders which uh, make the defenders uh, free some space uh, and the timing between the sliding of the, the pivot and the quality of the pass uh, from uh, the backcourt uh, uh, player uh, which is interesting. Uh, we can see uh, uh, the defenders going backwards uh, who have uh, to uh, counter the ball uh, by going backwards and it is the quality of the throw which makes the difference and now we will see another longer play we will uh, see again this duel uh, it's the same problem as we saw uh, just before. Uh, so this is a, a question to be taken into account uh, for the, when you uh, train your players. The attacker have to be uh, uh, very uh, solid. So there's a sliding of the of the pivot. Uh, we will create uh, this uh, out number. And uh, unfortunately here we had a two uh, to one of a very good uh, quality. Uh, we can see uh, uh, the uh, hands uh, raise, uh, rising uh, and the player could uh, free his ball uh, very quickly. But the defender is also performing uh, and that's now the second part after the three free throw. Uh, this was a good attack. We have a third part of the attack. And we have a fourth part of the attack. This attack, if we look at the score, does not succeed in four, ta in four parts, but it is not useless because uh, uh, this allowed you to keep your ball for a long time and this forced uh, uh, the defense uh, to be uh, very strong. Uh, so uh, this did not succeed, but this will succeed later. So we will see the next one. We will uh, see again this attack on a goal. A whole part uh, of the attack is excellent, but I wanted to show you uh, something uh, negative uh, regarding the quality of this attack um, by trying to be as uh, precise as possible regarding uh, uh, our demand uh, for the players. On this attack, we used uh, the uh, running uh, speed and uh, uh, this moving speed and uh, we will have a succession of crossings to uh, move uh, the defenders and I will stop here. 
we can see that the uh, defenders uh, uh, have their back to uh, the goal. So the situation is difficult uh, for the defense and the work of this uh, player is excellent, but I'm not really satisfied about the work of this player who should have gone back to his uh, 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 place uh, quicker. He uh, doesn't do it, so he's delayed, but uh, you can see he's not uh, uh, well uh, uh, positioned and uh, uh, we, uh, it's not because this action uh, succeeds that everything in the attack is perfect. This player uh, should uh, uh, have been more externally, but the player will uh, enter this uh, gap and conclude the attack. We will uh, still uh, use what uh, we have established, but on the other side, and we will use the duel with the uh, uh, side uh, back uh, player. Uh, this uh, attack has been well prepared. It is a right one, but behind uh, this player should be deeper and this one uh, should be more uh, in front of the gap and he should have asked for the ball uh, sooner. So you see, that at that level of the competition, the precision of uh, in the attack in the uh, intervals is essential. And uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, watch uh, the videos with the players after a match to understand everything. And uh, you have an option of uh, throw here, of shooting, of shooting. And I think uh, uh, they the two uh, to one uh, should have been uh, more used uh, externally. Uh, but now you uh, collect again the uh, ball, you have a second part of the attack. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Tactically, it is not an exceptional situation, but the technical quality of the player could make the difference. Uh, the technique uh, could impede you to have positive uh, actions, but here the technique of this player is excellent uh, uh, in his reading of the play. And so uh, it is uh, the technique of the player uh, which uh, uh, succeeded rather than the tactics which was established. A new attack and this time this is uh, uh, really interesting and we will see why in this first part of the attack. So you have a movement on the side and some acceleration. You have an external situation, which is interesting. You have to accelerate the ball. Uh, the uh, 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 player is uh, very smart. Instead of uh, going uh, very quickly on the left uh, back, uh, you can see that this defender is um, is uh, has no balance so this does not succeed he should have played with the pivot so we have a free throw behind and uh, we will use very quickly the play around the pivot the same observation on the second or third time of play the defenders uh, uh, who take too long to uh, go back to their position, the play, uh, player three, uh, the, piv the pivot could get a penalty. We will go on. Uh, still using this uh, dual situation. So you have a whole preparatory uh, work. This is an interesting action on a movement organized in order to create a, a wrong uh, option. Uh, 
And as you can see, we will uh, create some gap for the jewel, some space for the jewel. We have this kind of work. And this is where the action will be played. Uh, the wing player uh, will go back uh, very quickly. The pivot uh, will uh, slide to go back to a favorable uh, uh, situation. So you have now a dual situation, which is interesting and a pass, which is a good one. Unfortunately, at the technical level, uh, the goalkeeper has the ad advantage. We will uh, take uh, the same uh, tactical options in, a, in the dual, uh, in terms of dual in the central space, in the central zone. So we have uh, created some space. We are in a situation where you have a, a lot of space here and there. It's a favorable uh, uh, situation. Collectively, we prepared the, this uh, play to prepare the jewel. And now we can use very well uh, the situation. We have a strong jewel. This defender is obliged to float uh, the uh, position of uh, the pivot. Uh, and it's a very simple position, which is well played, technically speaking. So it's interesting now because, uh, as you can see, we are at the 24th minute so with two goals. And in the field, I entered young players because here we have a player of uh, 19 years old and here also. And we have another player of uh, 21 years old. So you can see the, that the uh, small problems uh, related to this option. So this situation is a well-worked situation. We took the time uh, to look uh, for a good position to shoot uh, with a lot of mobility uh, to move the defense and force this player in a shooting uh, position, uh, which is a very favorable position for him. And uh, uh, the, technically, uh, the technical uh, uh, position is good. Uh, the position of uh, the legs of the uh, arm is good, but he's uh, too quick uh, uh, in front of the uh, goalkeeper. Uh, I uh, said uh, that he's a young player and we will see that uh, he's still playing with a lot of emotion and uh, he uh, still doesn't have the good uh, technical adjustments. So we can see it in the continuity. So we will uh, uh, watch uh, this uh, attack with this young player. I don't like this part, uh, this uh, work, uh, if you compare it with what uh, we just saw, there's no external, uh, he, uh, uh, he, there's no fixing. Uh, uh, it's a work on which you have to be demanding in the preparation of the attack. That's what you should be doing. So this is not possible. This is not a high level work. Uh, he should go there and become, a, and become dangerous. He doesn't do it. Uh, you have to be uh, uh, very strict uh, for this kind of work. Uh, it, uh, he, did, it, he was careless uh, in his uh, way of playing and uh, we can see he, that he hesitates a lot. The quality of transmission is not good. We can see uh, again a situation which, which is not too bad and we have a second part of the attack. Still with the same players. We can see uh, a lot of emotion, a third time of attack, of the attack. Uh, and we can still surprise the defense uh, with the, uh, uh, we can, you can see it, uh, 
we can surprise the defense by accelerating uh, the, the game. We had asked to uh, uh, play uh, around these uh, free throws uh, because in the second time of uh, the attack, the defense were more, was more passive. We will uh, go now to another video. This is very interesting because uh, we close uh, to the end of uh, the first part of the play. Uh, it is less uh, performing after two or three uh, attacks because technically uh, with young plays, players, it is not perfect, but uh, we uh, still uh, play with this uh, team uh, because the score is not too bad. On this attack, you can see, we still have this player uh, who uh, uh, is uh, very careless uh, in his uh, fixation uh, work. Uh, he's uh, never dangerous. He's never dangerous when the ball moves. So it is a very simple attack and the whole quality of the attack uh, uh, will depend on the quality of uh, this player when he collects the ball, will eliminate this player with a good work of the pivot and the remaining defenders. So you can see that sometimes you can have very simple attacks where the core individual technical quality will make the difference. We will go on because I would like to make some uh, observations on these two last defenses. Uh, look at the score, which is important. We will uh, see it again. Uh, so as you can see, this uh, player uh, during uh, his time remaining on the field, it, he did not close uh, to the nine meters. And it is a, a true problem because this is, an, um, uh, will, uh, uh, is a problem for the attack. And here we will attack very quickly. We can say that it is technically well played, uh, but technically uh, speaking, the two last attacks uh, are not uh, good because and good enough uh, because uh, the score is uh, uh, 14 uh, uh, 19 we took uh, a penalty and uh, now we have the ball and we are looking for a solution too quickly which is not very simple moreover and there's a, a tactical problem after uh, w that's what i said to the play after uh, uh, the first part, uh, we do not uh, look uh, for ambitious uh, uh, shot. That's what I wanted to show you on this first part. We will go to the second part. We will go on with the same op uh, tactical options. on this uh, analysis of the attack. Look, look at what is uh, positive and negative. We can uh, see more quality of external fixation. Uh, and uh, you can see the same strategy uh, with a pivot uh, sliding and a dual. But here, there's a problem of reading of the game. Something uh, that I don't like uh, in the game is that uh, the player, instead of uh, uh, going uh, uh, to uh, uh, the side, uh, he will do the opposite, which will uh, impede a collective game. I would have uh, uh, preferred in the game Uh, to attack externally regarding in the framework of the strategy uh, we have established. We are in the second part of the attack. 
here we still have some carelessness in the fixation uh, uh, work. It is not as clean as what we did during the first period of the game. Exactly the same error, which means uh, that uh, it is a real problem in the game here. We will use this jewel and instead of playing uh, to, uh, uh, go externally, uh, the player will come back internally and uh, there is no more collective play. And second period of the game, we try to use uh, around this uh, free throw. We try to use the free throw. It is a very good quality action. We are in a movement of free throw, which is a situation of the game which is not uh, enough used, even though the teams are trying to, uh, uh, tr is trying to do, uh, to do its best. Yeah. And uh, here we have a a change of direction with a sliding of the pivot, which allows the pivot to be in the external gap. We can uh, have uh, here the same tactical options since this works well. Uh, you don't need to change it. So we still have a movement of players in their preparation. The combination of uh, the sliding of the pivot uh, to uh, free the duel uh, with a, play a very performing player, mobilizing uh, two players, as you can see here. Uh, the uh, work of uh, uh, the pivot in the central zone and the def and the defenders uh, which are uh, which are arrive too late I would like to show you something in this attack again. Uh, the shooting option, you can see that uh, uh, this uh, uh, player is jumping higher and player number five has to be deeper uh, to play the two to one externally. Uh, uh, this uh, 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 these players should not be in the alignment of the pass. We can see that this defender, if he uh, just uh, uses his arm, uh, will uh, uh, not allow the pass. So we can go on. This is interesting. In comparison with the, the capacity that the players could have to analyze the game in front of them and to take initiatives with the defenders. So it is a movement we could see already and uh, with a, a very quick uh, shoot on the defender who is not uh, immediately mobilized. Yes, it is interesting because
because you have a continuity of the game and this was one of our objectives to attack uh, this match. Uh, preparatory work, which has been a long uh, work. And here you have the work for the fixation situation. We re really use the extent of the uh, width of uh, the uh, field and the situation of the uh, shot, uh, which is of good quality. Now, we will go on in the match and I want to show you a very important moment in the match. Uh, so we still, uh, the score is still uh, 2018, uh, 11th minute in the second uh, period. The, our strategy uh, su is succeeding. We are in a fair, favorable situation. But what is interesting is some, that sometimes you have tactic changes of tactics and uh, my colleague and friend will establish a defensive change and uh, it, uh, we had planned it uh, because uh, this team uh, always use, uh, uses this uh, defensive uh, change and what is interesting to see is that uh, when you have this defensive change you find a very quickly a solution if you change your uh, defense and if in attack uh, you cannot find a solution immediately uh, then uh, you will uh, doubt you will have some doubts and it is very important on the first attacks to find rapidly a solution so this is the first uh, uh, defense uh, and we will uh, use um, a game defense we had prepared. So this is the first attack, which is not a good one. So I take uh, uh, this uh, time uh, because I didn't know whether uh, my players uh, would react correctly. And as you can see behind, we can, we go back. So I take this time out and uh, we could uh, reorganize ourselves on this time out uh, to have uh, the right response and uh, we will use a combination of a gap and a sliding of the pivot to isolate this uh, central defender. This has succeeded. Uh, the pivot is sliding. We can isolate this uh, player. Uh, we can uh, have our best player for this duel. Uh, we have to use the best qualities of your players, of course, and uh, we will have a, a duel uh, which uh, succeeds. Uh, uh, you have to win this duel first. Uh, you have a tactical work and you have the technical quality of the player who can eliminate uh, the defender and the uh, goalkeeper. It is interesting uh, because uh, we had a tactical change to see how we would attack. So we go on with the same strategy, but on the other side. And here, uh, there's a, an important error from one of the player, a tactical error of one player. And this is rather interesting because uh, this I think that this player should have gone uh, 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 le uh, should ha should have gone further to uh, free some space. And uh, here you have uh, the sliding and the two to one, which is good. And the number thirteen, who is a young player, and I'm not being nice to him, is uh, making an error because he should look for the width of, uh, of the uh, field, but he comes back and he's alone with uh, and losing the ball. So this is the uh, next action. We are looking uh, for 
something uh, uh, which is which can succeed. So you can see the two uh, these two successive actions because they look uh, they are, look similar, but the central player will play better at the tactical level, and uh, he will look uh, for the uh, side gap. We have a good positioning, even though it, it could have been better, a good fixation uh, time and a continuity uh, game, which is interesting uh, for the, because of the defense, which did not reorganize itself. So uh, this is uh, still the same tactical option. And again, the same player uh, making the same error. We have a very important work regarding gaps. Uh, we will have to uh, destabilize the defense from this duel. And uh, he's a left-handed, so the situation is favorable with this uh, crossing uh, to attack here either to shoot or to play with the uh, wing player or the pivot uh, and uh, he will choose this uh, uh, situation which is favorable but he chooses uh, something which is not right and he comes back and this is the reason why on the next action i had to change him so uh, it, it is a pity because he's a quality player but on the four last attacks uh, he uh, lo we lost uh, twice the ball and uh, we had uh, 17 uh, with a very uh, uh, close uh, score uh, so uh, the, uh, these two tactical choices, uh, which were not uh, the good ones, pushed me to change him. Uh, I had to change the players, therefore. So we still go on with this attack of uh, this, uh, with this defense. And here we have a very good attack. We have a very good attack for two reasons uh, because tactically uh, the team is uh, uh, playing well and tactically is, it is well carried out you have a good gap uh, the quality the preparation is of good quality and you can see that the two side uh, uh, back players are well playing and uh, there's a combination here of work to fix the defenders and a work behind the defense with the I said this was well achieved because this pass is very difficult. Uh, the defender is in contact, uh, understood that this action was dangerous, so he uh, was trying to uh, uh, stop uh, the surpass. So there's a very uh, interesting uh, technical work which uh, frees the ball from this uh, player. I uh, would have uh, preferred uh, uh, the player to be uh, more active on the block. And there's uh, from behind a very good quality shot and a good duel. So we go on on this option. Uh, uh, we are going uh, towards the uh, end of the match. So it is a first part of the game uh, which does not succeed, but still interesting. Uh, that moment of the match, it is important uh, to uh, gain, gain some time and uh, remain uh, longer in attack. Here we created some space and we attack this player. The second time of the attack will come. So there's a preparatory work which allows you to gain some time. And this has been uh, well played because at that moment of the match, we still have nine minutes to play 
it, it is more interesting uh, uh, to uh, stay longer in attack. So we have a preparation in attack, uh, which is of good quality, even though here I would have uh, preferred um, a longer fixation. Uh, so we will create our hotspot here. There's a good work of this player. And we still keep the ball on this action in the continuity. Uh, the movement goes in the opposite side. So clearly, I think that this attack is not a good one, but it succeeds. So sometimes, uh, if uh, I look at the tactical side only, uh, things should have been better. There's a problem of reading of the game, probably, knowing that uh, we still have eight minutes in the match and uh, players are rather tired. And uh, I think uh, that this uh, running on this side uh, uh, should, have got, should have been on the other side instead of uh, going back to the defenders, he should have run uh, on the uh, other side uh, externally. It is not because uh, the action uh, succeeded uh, uh, that uh, we should not analyze the options taken by the players. But if in the op game option, we can uh, have some discussion. At that moment, the, this is important. Uh, this player has uh, three other players around him. He can free uh, his ball, which allows you, him uh, to get a penalty, even though the action at the beginning was not the right one. Uh, this ends uh, with a positive action. So, uh, excuse me. I'm looking for the next video. I'm sorry. We already saw this video. So we can see something uh, simple, but very well carried out on a very simple work. So we have the sliding of the pivot during the whole match. This is an action we already saw. So we can see again this uh, sliding of the pivot to uh, uh, free this uh, player who had a very good duel. He obliges two defenders to come to him and he sends a very good uh, ball to the pivot which gives him a penalty. What is important to see here is that we only have five more minutes and we still, uh, uh, the situation is still favorable to us, but uh, we have to be right at the tactical and technical levels, uh, but it is uh, even more difficult now because uh, you have this uh, physical tiredness and uh, your emotion on a Champions League uh, match. So we still have the sliding of the pivot to isolate the defender. This is an act a quality action. And uh, there's some defect that I want to show you here. Uh, this was well carried out on this action. 
there's something which is not really right. Uh, the, the, uh, the position of the pivot uh, who should have gone to the uh, wing player and when he receives the ball, I would have preferred the pivot to be here with his arm uh, extended to mobilize the defender. Uh, so we go back to this uh, free throw for a, a longer attack. So we are losing the ball at that moment, which is a, a real problem. This is not a right action. It is not a right because we should have uh, sent the ball there because the option of the in the match at that moment is decisive. We had uh, planned to play externally and now we have an option which is not the good one or we can see clearly uh, two to one in the opposite here and the uh, uh, center back uh, will choose uh, uh, this position he should have gone uh, deeper in the field and here we are losing the ball which is a real problem we are at 25 26 so we had a ball on the counter in the counter attack now the ball is very important here we have a timeout what is interesting is uh, to see the uh, strategic level So Kilse came back uh, with one more goal and they changed their defense. They, they came back to their aligned defense and we have a last timeout. Here a timeout and we will uh, come back after the timeout where Kilse has again changed its defense with a one to five defense, uh, which is interesting uh, when we play uh, against a uh, uh, great coaches, uh, you have uh, various uh, uh, tactical options. So we can see that this attack is extremely important. We will play differently with newcomers in the, in the field, but with the same objective to attack this central defender. We will see this situation. So we can see the pivot sliding externally to block this player. The fixation, and now we try, and now the defender is ready. So we keep the ball. Uh, I don't like this action, but we can still uh, mark uh, with uh, and we are lucky. And just uh, uh, to show you that up to now, we uh, could use uh, free throws uh, uh, by uh, accelerating uh, the game. But what is important now with the free throw, uh, we uh, take too much time to go back to our position. Uh, the players are not ready. And instead of using this situation uh, by uh, going forward and uh, going to the attack, we are losing time and uh, we don't play well and we uh, still succeed thanks to this initiative. Without the ball of this player uh, who uh, read uh, the game and uh, who saw that space and who created the imbalance in the defense. But uh, uh, with a lot of uh, success uh, in comparison with the uh, pre pre previous action. So we, uh, uh, I think we won uh, this match, but uh, with only 
one goal difference. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes, for, for me it's fine and the translation is working very well. Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I didn't know really whether you were hearing me. Uh, uh, with all uh, these uh, videos, I just wanted to show you what uh, we could do uh, after the match with the players. So uh, I, you have to observe the match and observe uh, the tactics established. And on this match, uh, I was really satisfied for many elements because uh, uh, we implemented what we had planned. And it is very important to uh, implement uh, the, uh, uh, what we had planned. But even though your uh, game plan is uh, right, you need a technical level which, which is important to take into account. And uh, uh, the exercise uh, we could have is to say after the observation of this match, if I had uh, to have uh, uh, training sessions in, in order to improve uh, the play of my, uh, uh, of my players, uh, what would be my offensive plan? Uh, and that's what I did. And yeah. I saw uh, two or three things uh, interesting, especially the work of uh, fixation what? and uh, of the defense in the two or three uh, first parts of the attack. As uh, you could see, uh, at the, by the end of the first period, uh, uh, one player did not implement it. And the second thing, the quality of passes. And the third issue, on, on which I would like to insist is the uh, technical uh, quality between uh, 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 the player passing the ball and the uh, player receiving the ball because uh, uh, the pass is important. If you uh, receive well your ball, then you can take uh, the information on the goalkeeper and shooting becomes easier. That's what I uh, wanted uh, to tell you. Okay, pa Patrice, can you uh, continue with the presentation? Yes? Would you like me to introduce the club now? Yes, of course. Can I remove my, now the uh, images? Yes? So I'm looking for my document. That you, you can explain him again, the procedure. Yeah. He's not listening to me. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, you can start. I wanted to introduce uh, the Montpellier Club. So very quickly, uh, this uh, club uh, uh, was established in 1982, which is uh, relatively young uh, according to other European clubs. Uh, he had access uh, to the first division in 1992, first uh, uh, title of uh, uh, France champion in 1995 on the last year of the Champions League uh, where you had uh, uh, return man matches. Uh, we uh, could win. In uh, 10, 2010, uh, we had the building of a new arena in Montpellier. 
in 2013, the club uh, changed its legal structure and opened its capital to uh, uh, private uh, companies. Uh, and now we have uh, 17 sharehold, private shareholders. In 2016, uh, we won uh, the 14th title in Montpellier. And then uh, we uh, uh, won the uh, final four uh, for France. Uh, this is historical. We had uh, three uh, uh, French teams, uh, uh, which uh, happened for the first time. So this is uh, uh, our record with uh, very good uh, uh, reminders. Uh, we won uh, 42 uh, titles, uh, our economic uh, model. We have three uh, different bodies. Uh, we have an association for the amateur uh, sector with a budget of 1 million euros. Uh, the sports uh, company with uh, 17 shareholders who are... Uh, uh, who um, manage, manage uh, uh, a 7 million euro budget. Uh, they're in charge of marketing and ticketing. And we have also uh, an endowment fund uh, working uh, in uh, the social, in social actions. This club has many uh, social operations in the difficult areas of uh, Montpellier. And uh, we are working in two arenas, uh, the Palais des Sports uh, Bougnol, who, which is the uh, historical uh, uh, arena uh, with uh, 3,000 uh, seats. And we have uh, also the arena Sud de France uh, uh, for championship and important matches. Uh, with uh, more than uh, uh, 8,700 uh, seats. And uh, a few figures to give you uh, an overview of uh, our club at the European level. Uh, we played uh, 277 uh, uh, matches. We, are, uh, we have been playing for more than uh, 23 uh, years. Uh, uh, two finals, for instance, and uh, two titles. And I played uh, three finals uh, myself. And uh, we just lost our title a few years ago. Uh, some of the best players uh, who played uh, in Montpellier. Montpellier uh, has uh, been a club uh, uh, training many uh, uh, players. Uh, we have a training uh, center and we are even training uh, foreign players. Uh, uh, Frédéric Anquetil, uh, Patrick Casal, uh, and, and so on, Fabregas, uh, Dolenech Karabatic. Uh, uh, so uh, part of these players uh, uh, were trained in Montpellier and uh, they wore uh, the colors of Montpellier. I hope that this season uh, you will see uh, this uh, team and that uh, we will get rid of uh, this COVID uh, crisis and uh, that we will be able to play a few matches. I should have uh, introduced myself uh, at the beginning. Uh, our record is not the most important thing, uh, but uh, today I have a training of uh, uh, training and physical education uh, coach. Uh, I have uh, uh, been coach uh, in, a, uh, in at school for, f uh, and then I trained uh, the Paris Saint Germain from '88 uh, to '90, and I'm the coach since '94 uh, in Montpellier, and. Uh, 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 for 15 years now, uh, I am a coach and general manager of the club. I uh, manage uh, all the uh, wage earners of the club. Uh, so we have some 50 uh, people working uh, in the club in all services, uh, as in a normal company, uh, uh, in marketing, uh, management, and so on. And it is an honor to manage this club uh, now uh, for 26 years. So this was a, a brief introduction of uh, what is uh, Montpellier Handball today.
what I suggest now is to answer your questions if you have any. Uh, we do have a few questions. I'll begin with one that was focused more on this lecture. There are a few that are about some of your opinions a bit more generally. Um, the first one is the person is asking that a lot of what you talked about focused on the back court and um, they just want to know how the wings fit into a lot of these situations you're talking about. Uh, I think he's not using the uh, interpretation tool. Um, how can I, I don't know how I can reach him then. Patrice, can you hear us? Yeah, can you switch uh, on the bottom of your computer to choose uh, the French language button? Down, 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 down on the right side. Nadia, can you translate? I'm sorry, I'm translating, but he's not listening to uh, to the translation. Oh, okay. Yeah, switch on uh, French language. Okay, now he's listening to the uh, French translation. Okay, so again. Hmm? Okay. Um, okay, so this first question, um, someone asked about how most of what you've spoken about focused on the back court, and they want to know about how the wings fit into these kinds of tactical preparation you're speaking about. Of course, uh, wing uh, players uh, play a very important role in handball. It is a, a position which is uh, very important. Uh, regarding uh, the attack situations, uh, there are, they have uh, two different roles. Uh, the first one is to uh, uh, making a gap and uh, have as much width in the uh, field as possible because the uh, handball now uh, uh, has a very uh, uh, big uh, players uh, so you need uh, spaces and second thing for the uh, wing players either uh, to be in a situation to end up the situations in the the ending uh, zone in the wing zone or to give some continuity to the play regarding uh, the strategy of this match it is clear that wing players were not really used even though they have been very important they have not been really used for a very simple reason uh, players on which it was necessary to attack the jewels uh, where we had weaknesses in the defense. It was uh, the two uh, central uh, uh, defenders and uh, the two left defenders. Uh, this is uh, the reason why we attacked with duels in, the, in these uh, areas. And uh, uh, the defense of Kilse was uh, organized man-to-man. Uh, -man. So uh, uh, we, had, we didn't really require uh, to go to use the wing players. So this is a match where wing players did not have really balls. Uh, they don't like these kind of matches, but this is not because uh, they didn't receive many balls that they were not efficient, uh, but they had some work uh, in counter attack uh, because we decided to, to play very quickly. And each time we receive the ball, uh, they would go back uh, in counter-attack. So they uh, participated to the match and they have been required in at the defensive level. Okay, uh, somebody else asked that a lot of the focus you've talked about is on the space, uh, especially with the back. What, in your opinion, are the other most fundamental principles in attack? 
I think that uh, uh, what I tried to show you was uh, uh, that on uh, the option uh, we choose was based on duals. Why? Uh, because um, I think that in the uh, uh, strength relationship between uh, both uh, teams, uh, in Montpellier uh, last season, uh, we had players uh, who were really performing in duels and uh, we could observe uh, that they were serving defenders when they were isolated, uh, were not really uh, performing in duels. So in order to create these uh, spaces, we had always uh, combined a, rela a relationship between uh, the uh, passes with uh, a sliding of the pivot or a call of the ball from the wing player. And this is the combination which allowed to isolate the situation that we could use. Uh, but is a strategic at attacking uh, uh, strat uh, option uh, regarding uh, the fundamental principles. So we also have other fundamental principles such as, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, uh, back players are, are, are behind the nine meters. And what is important is to analyze very well with the players and the team uh, that you will uh, have in front of you to uh, see what are the weaknesses and uh, uh, of the play of the uh, opponents and uh, for every match you're not obliged to use all uh, that is possible to do in handball if uh, uh, we could have uh, chosen in a, uh, some other with other players uh, other options uh, in, a, in a, any other match uh Somebody wants to know how many variations that you would have in your kind of standard game plan for a particular game. The difficulty when you vary your game is uh, to uh, disturb uh, the opponent uh, without disturbing your own players. Uh, which means uh, that at one moment, the objective is uh, to uh, uh, cheat the uh, uh, opponent. Uh, 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 the coach would like to have uh, uh, various possibilities and uh, we are working uh, uh, in the training to uh, coach with these uh, various uh, possibilities, uh, but this depends on the quality of the players uh, because uh, you can use some tactical options uh, which could be interesting. Uh, I like to work uh, to give to my team the means to have various options, both in attack or in defense. And uh, how uh, many options you use in a match, uh, this will vary. Uh, in the, the match uh, against Kinsey, uh, we didn't really uh, change our options, so we didn't change them, but we changed them for the return match. So uh, you don't have to change yourself for, uh, for changing. There's an important moment in the match. Uh, we had uh, some uh, game uh, in the timeouts. Uh, when you change your defense, I take a timeout to see uh, uh, the adaptation and then they change again their defense. This is part of, of the game. What is uh, pleasant in our sport is that the managers are there to play also. Uh, it is a play in which coaches uh, do play a role. And uh, this uh, makes this profession very uh, pleasant. Um, okay. Well, someone has just asked, uh, I believe you do. Someone has asked if you do training courses for coaches. I believe that you work with the French Handball Federation and people might be able to access some of this, of your additional teaching material. No, uh, I do not uh, deliver any license to coaches, but uh, we have created an academy. Uh, we have established an academy and uh, uh, last year, for instance, uh, uh, we had some coaches uh, 
coming for one week in uh, Montpellier for the uh, next preparation. We have many coaches exchanging with us. We have uh, established also a meeting lab uh, organized. Uh, last year, we could not organize it because of the COVID-19, but we will do it this year. And uh, we have uh, one week uh, exchange of uh, managers and coaches. The idea is that I don't want to be a, a teacher, uh, a handball teacher. Uh, this is not interesting to me, uh, but the exchange is very interesting and exchanging with other coaches and other cultures is uh, a very enriching and uh, exciting and uh, uh, for coaches uh, coming uh, for a few days uh, in Montpellier, you're most welcome to exchange with us uh, trainings and ideas on handball. Okay, I'm just trying to translate. There are a lot of questions coming in French, so <laughs> I'm trying to translate them. Um, I can probably uh, see them and uh, answer them directly. He says. Yes, in the Q&A, there are two questions in French I can see. Uh, there's a, an interesting question. Uh, what is important in the training of uh, young players today, for instance? And this is, uh, 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 all questions are interesting, but this one in particular. Um, there's a very important work to be done today for uh, uh, the training of young players on the understanding of uh, 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 the future of handball and the, because uh, the players we are training today will be uh, tomorrow's player. And I think uh, that there are a few principles to establish. And the first thing is that our sport should uh, combine two main things uh, because this is the beauty of our sport. It is a, a t uh, an extremely technical sport and uh, the people come to see us because the movement and uh, uh, of the ball uh, should be efficient. Technique is uh, very important, therefore. But they come to see the physical confrontation of uh, players, uh, which are hardly hit sometimes. And it is important to uh, uh, keep this characteristic of our sport if we are uh, uh, too much on the uh, physical uh, element, we will uh, lose something in our sport. But if we don't authorize it, we will have a handball which will look, look like a, a star game uh, uh, without being interesting. Uh, so I think that it is import important to keep the balance uh, and uh, the referees uh, play an important role there. Uh, we have uh, uh, to keep this balance between the uh, physical and technical uh, aspects. And the, in the training, we still have to improve uh, technique, the technique in uh, uh, an environment which is really restricted uh, uh, I, I, sh I showed you a, a very important pass uh, uh, with a very aggressive uh, def defenders. And we have uh, uh, physical restrictions and uh, we need uh, to improve uh, uh, the uh, technical uh, level of uh, the younger players to have as much as possible uh, this uh, uh, technical basis. Uh, the pass technique and the defensive uh, technique and uh, dual technique, uh, these are three elements which are essential to me. Uh, someone did ask about whether you use speed tactics such as fast restarts, how you see these. I think this is what you've just spoken about. Speed is another element. Uh, now and maybe more as we're going forward. Can you comment about this? Uh, my profession uh, is uh, um, uh, working as a general manager and coach. I don't like coaches saying that only victory is important. I think uh, this is not really professional to say so. Our role as coach, of course, is uh, to have our uh, team winning, of, 
but we also have a responsibility, another responsibility which is important regarding the show we offering to uh, spectators. Uh, there's no professionalism. If, uh, uh, if you don't have uh, spectators coming to see your TV rights. So this is a shared responsibility with the players to offer a show. We, uh, we are here there to win and to offer a show. And uh, this is extremely important uh, in uh, what we should take into account uh, with the players. Therefore, I, I think that we should try to push players to have a maximum commitment in the intensity of the game. Yeah. I think that our responsibility as managers and coach is uh, uh, to uh, make our players being smart, uh, understanding situations uh, in the field and situations outside of the field. And this is the reason why I think that it is interesting to use the video. Uh, that's what we uh, do uh, at 80%, uh, only 20% uh, uh, regarding uh, the uh, opponent and 80% uh, for us. And what is important, even when uh, we won a match and even uh, though we uh, uh, marked a goal, we, uh, we have to improve ourselves uh, through uh, various uh, details that we can show to the uh, players. Um, okay, uh, most of the other questions are in French and I'm really having trouble translating them. I don't know why my <laughs> translator is not working. If you see something else interesting, uh, feel free to answer. They all interesting. There's a question. Uh, how, how do you convince a whole team to be at the disposal of the, whole, of the team? Uh, and this is important. Uh, according to my experience, uh, things are going forward, but uh, it was interesting uh, to uh, uh, train in the past and now and in the future, but motivations are changing. Uh, some uh, 20 years ago when we were training, uh, the collective satisfaction was uh, the dominant satisfaction when you won a match, uh, players were satisfied at 80 or 90 percent uh, and uh, uh, some 10 percent had uh, to be satisfied individu individually. Now with professionalism, uh, things have changed. When you win a match, uh, you have a uh, uh, you have uh, 30 to 40 percent of players uh, who are satisfied, but the individual satisfaction is still there because uh, you have individual aspira aspirations. And uh, one of the key for a team is to associate in a collective uh, game the collective aspirations, uh, the collective needs and the individual needs. So how do you do it practically speaking? It's not simple. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, and this depends on the culture of the coach and uh, his experience, his age. Uh, and uh, what is important to me is to try to understand uh, what, on, on, uh, what makes the player play. Uh, I don't, we don't need to play, uh, to uh, talk a lot uh, with the player. Uh, uh, talking doesn't mean understanding. It is um, important to try to identify the uh, intrinsic uh, motivations of the player. And uh, once you have understood for the majority of your players what were the uh, intrinsic motivations, you have uh, to try to give them I don't know whether I, uh, this will be translated to give uh, to convince them uh, enough uh, so that they are satisfied. We need to uh, uh, be concerned with the collective interest and individual interest, uh, knowing, and uh, you have uh, to say it since the beginning of your collaboration with the team that whatever happens the collective interest will be 
more important than the individual interest. Uh, but this doesn't mean that you don't need to be interested by the individual interest. And this is uh, the reason why it is good to, se to separate yourself from some uh, uh, players, uh, because what we, you can offer to the player is not in adequation uh, who does not correspond to what uh, the uh, individual player is looking for. Okay, we have a couple of minutes, so if you want to answer one more, we can, or we can finish. Yes, I... how to conciliate uh, the perception in, in the younger player. This is a major question in the training of a young player, but not only in the training of a younger player, it is a major question of uh, a training. You cannot dissociate, or you can dissociate in the work, the technical part and the tactical part and the physical part, but uh, very quickly uh, for in every uh, training, uh, you have to mix this. You cannot uh, design a, a training where for two months you will have, you would have a, tactic, uh, a tactical work and then for two months you would have a, a tec a, a technical work. You have to mix all these uh, uh, smoothly. It is like cooking. Uh, you can add uh, this or that, but permanently you have to work both on the analysis uh, in the various technical and tactical and strategic phases and very quickly work on the mix and gather all this. And in fine, uh, these, uh, uh, the players who would have the best understanding of the game who will be the best ones. But it is the same thing for coaches. All right, that is exactly 2.30. So we will end here as we have another lecture coming up at three. Uh, thank you so much, Patrice, and a special thank you also to our translators, especially Nadja, for her work during this session. Um, so, at I would three like to I would like to thank all those who organized this uh, 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 conference. Uh, it's not really easy. I would like to thank, uh, especially all coaches. Uh, uh, who uh, shared with me uh, uh, these uh, moments uh, in handball and I would like to uh, uh, renew my invitation uh, in the Montpellier Club and we would be pleased to share anything with you. Well, we, we look forward to being able to visit in person. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. We will be back at three o'clock uh, in 30 minutes with the last lecture of session four. That is from IHF uh, lecturer and official, Pam Morton Sodal, and he will be focusing on offensive fouls according to the, the IHF Playing Rules and Referees Commission and Commission for Coaching and Methods criteria. So we hope to see you then. Thank you again, Patrice and everyone, and we'll see you again.